Hey, there you are. Welcome to Shofar Mountain. Welcome to Viking Preparedness. I'm Pastor Joe Fox. Uh, the rut is on. Uh, I wish you could smell this billy goat. Woof. I don't wish you could smell him. He's, uh, man, woof, he's right. Got the uh, goats in rut, have dogs in heat. You know, I have an Anatolian uh, Great Pyrenees mix puppy. She's uh, nine months old. She's in heat right now. Um, we're not breeding her. We want her to get a little bit older before we breed her to our full blood Anatolian. Uh, that's a really good mixture. And people around here in the Ozarks really like Anatolian uh, Pyrenees mixes for livestock dogs, uh, guard dogs. Um, yeah, see, beware of the dog. Uh, <laughs> what we want to do is uh, have a few around here. We want, like, we're going to have two goat herds. We're going to have a pygmy goat herd for meat and an alpine goat herd. Let's go this way. For uh, <clears throat> milk and stuff like that. And so we're going to separate those well, and you have to separate them or they'll interbreed. Um, and so we're going to need dogs for each herd uh, because we free range our goats a lot. Today, this morning, they're not being free range, but we let them out and uh, we put a dog with them and the dog just hangs out and protects them from coyotes, you know, whatever. The dogs also alert. They bark uh, when anything out of the ordinary happens so we know if we're at one end uh, of the community. And we hear a dog going, we know something's going on at the other end of the community, which is good. Got to have dogs. But, you know, we're looking for sustainability, right? Like, how do we keep having dogs? Um, we're not going to be a puppy mill, but we need to get good at uh, dealing with puppies, breeding dogs, that kind of thing. And you know how I am. You learn by doing, right? And so that's what we're trying to do. We're probably going to end up with a small pack of Rhodesian Ridgebacks eventually. It is probably the perfect in my opinion, homestead dog. Um, they're good guard dogs, good uh, around the farm. They were bred for that initially. Um, and so, yeah, that's what we're doing. Permaculture for critters, you know, and, and we're also trying to do permaculture um, ideals, um, get our gardens going. Next, I think I might have said this in another video, next year uh, we're gonna plant heirloom corn. Um, it'll be harder for us to plant it. Uh, we won't get as big a yield, but it'll be non-GMO corn, and, and so that's our goal, and we're going to try and grow a lot so we can eat it in season and, and put it up also. Um, let's see, what else? Um, yeah, the whole idea of critters and food and, and growing your own, um, it's homesteading, right? You know, the homesteading, small-scale farming, Mother Earth news with an attitude, <laughs> you know, kind of stuff, and really... It's the way to go. I remember, I, I did a video early on. If you scroll down to the bottom of all my videos, I think I called it Evolution of a Survivalist or something like that. And um, I talked about the stages people go through, which I won't reiterate now. But the bottom line is the longer you're in this, uh, the more prepared you want to be. If you want to be truly prepared, then you need to start thinking about food. You need to produce food. And you have to be able to do it on a sustainable basis, not going down and buying your cabbage starts at, you know, the store that you plant every spring, um, but actually saving the seed, starting the seed early, how do you do that, getting your plants in the ground, tending them, you know, that kind of thing. And so that is one of our goals here at Shofar Mountain, is trying to get to that where everything's sustainable and we don't need to go into town. Now, will we still go into town? Sure. But honestly, I would like to get it down to where we're only going into town, like two people going into town together maybe once a week. You know, really? Kind of come out of her, my people, on a bigger scale. Now, if we've got things to do where we're meeting with other believers or, you know, we're, we're going to other churches or something like that, that's different. But I'm talking about going in for supplies, going in to buy stuff, go shopping, go out to eat, that kind of stuff. Um, just trying to, you know, bring it on home. And quite frankly, I think the more we practice that, the better off we're going to be when it happens. Um, it's coming. I've been saying it for a while. My wife's told me, you've been saying that since 1984. I have. That's true. Uh, but man, read your newspaper, you know, and uh, get ready. You know, I, t I tell everybody, get ready. Do the best you can do with what you have. But one thing I would really like you to consider is moving you know, getting out onto a sustainable community. We need people. We need to be around others. Um, you can't do everything all by yourself. 
you can't garden and water the critters and build the new house and pull security and cook the food and clean up and yada yada all by yourself, right? So you need community. And uh, I'm not the only one saying this. There are other communities out there. There are other people with the vision uh, of creating an ark, if you will, in, in, in these troubled times that we have coming. Uh, one of those is Kent Uptegrove. And hey, check him out. He's at arkhavenministries.org, I think. Um, Ark Haven, A R K Haven Ministries. Uh, I've never met the man, but I like him. And, and I need to go meet him. He lives somewhere here in the Ozarks, and I, I'm going to hook up with him here in about a month or so. And uh, if you could send some prayers his way, um, he, he's having a couple medical issues, minor. They'll, they'll be taken care of, but you could send some prayers his way and check out his website. He has good information, he has good ideas, he's an idea guy, and uh, I, I think it may motivate you, you know, it may help to motivate you uh, along some of the lines that I've been trying to motivate you on. Come out of her, my people, get with other like-minded believers, and uh, start building some kind of community that's going to sustain itself, right, sustainability, uh, when everything else starts falling apart. Because we're going to need each other, and we're going to need to be able to do that, um, and something about community, you know, a lot of people, I, I was talking to Pastor Dal about this recently, and I have a radio interview coming up, uh, I don't have a watch on, <laughs> I don't have, can't see it on here either, but I have a radio interview coming up at 11, um, about community, is a lot of people like the idea of community, you know, they think, oh man, I'd love to live at a, a place like Straightway, you know, which is a, an intentional community of believers, um, Yah-fearing believers out in Tennessee, and it's gorgeous, right, it's beautiful. Um, and a lot of people are like, man, I'd love to live at a place like that. I'd love to go do that. But what people don't realize is while they like the idea of it, they have no concept and they don't like when they, when they clash into the concept of the work that is involved. It's hard work. You know, if you're going to produce your own food, that requires you to work at that almost every day, right? Um, you got to be in the garden. If it's not garden time, if it's winter and you don't have a greenhouse, um, you know, then you got to be taking care of tools or taking care of your tractor or things like that. But there's always work to be done. My son uh, did some studies on this, and there's something called the daily round, which is like your, your daily chore list that you basically do. And then there's the, the yearly round. And it's like throughout the year, we typically do these things in March, these things in April and May, and dun 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 And it's an agricultural lifestyle. And really, if you want to live on a self-sustaining uh, community, it's an agricultural lifestyle, right? You're producing your own food, and that requires work. And a lot of people, you guys aren't used to it. You know, you, you, you like the idea of reading Mother Earth News where you look at people in a brand new flannel shirt and, and pressed jeans out there with their, you know, rototiller making this gorgeous garden of big cabbages, and you're thinking that's what it's all about. It's not. <laughs> it's it's uh, mucking out stalls and, and carrying manure and making compost piles and, and stuff like that. Um, and so... Hey, start looking at yourself in the mirror and start asking yourself, you know, how much am I willing um, to do? And maybe you've already answered that, right? Maybe that's why you're, you're living where you are. Um, but if, if you start thinking about what's coming down the road and then you envision in your mind the most ideal uh, place, situation uh, to be in for you and your family. You know, where would I want to live when, when the world is in chaos, when, you know, there's just pain and suffering? Would I want to live in my suburban, uh, you know, neighborhood? Would I want to live in my city? Or would I want to live with a group of other people who think, act, and believe like I do, um, grow our own food, and, and that kind of thing? And the answer might be yes, but then you have to take that a step further and realize what you're actually saying. Because to gain those things, you really have to give up a lot of other things. Unless you have a bunch of money. You know, if you have a bunch of money, you can go build yourself, you know, the ultimate survival haven retreat in, you know, northwest Montana or something. And, uh, you know, just buy everything. Buy your gardens. Have people come put them in for you and buy your orchard and, you know, have people come plant your trees for you. And, and you can do that if you have the money, and you know, you can bring in eight kinds of power, solar power, wind power, da da da, you can do that. But the reality is, you know, if you're anywhere in my socioeconomic or lower, you know, <laughs> class, um, which is the vast majority of you, uh, you can't afford that. And, but you can still have it. 
you can't afford it, but you can have it. What are you willing to give up to get what you want? You know, I, I know two families, and I talk about them frequently. I'm probably going to put them in my next book, um, who basically gave up everything. Actually, I know a lot of people who gave up everything and moved out here. But two families in particular were very urban-type people. And uh, the one family just bought property in the boot hill of Missouri and, and uh, they're doing the back and forth thing from Kansas City to there to kind of get their place ready. Another family just said, we're out of here. And <laughs> they up and they moved to the, the Ozarks of Southern Missouri and uh, got themselves a house and, and things worked out for them. Um, didn't work out initially, but the Most High had them in his hand and uh, it's working out pretty good for them now. And, you know, Yah is truly blessing them. But they took the step. They left the goodness behind. They left their, you know, their smoothie making machine. <laughs> that they just plug in and they moved out to oh my god where did we go you know i'm um, kind of thing but they took the step and, and they're willing to pay uh, the price that it takes to live in a place like this uh, look at yourself in the mirror ask yourself are you willing to do that and if you are start getting busy all right i'll see you out there chill on.